everyone, my name is Ioli Harper and I am doing a video today about voting against abortion. I am pro-life and I believe that all children are special babies, even though they're not born yet. And I'm doing a video about how to, ch how to choose a candidate who values life. I wouldn't vote for any person running for any office if I knew that they were supporting abortion. We should vote for people who support life and not vote just because someone is a part of a political party that we typically vote for or political parties that are usually supported by our friends and family. It takes courage to stand out from others and pick principle over comfort, but it helps us grow as human beings. My Native American heritage um, helped me to internalize a lot of different things growing up on the White Mount Apache Reservation, and it helped me to value life. I am White Mount Apache, and I'm Chippewa. I'm also Caucasian. As a young person, I never heard anyone ever speak in favor of abortion. I knew it existed and knew what it was, at some point, but in our world on the White Mountain Apache Reservation, no one ever talked about it because no one ever had an abortion that we knew of. It was one of those things that was an anomaly in our society, so it never occurred to anyone to talk about it. It virtually didn't exist in our society. Where it did exist in the world, it was considered to be an abomination. So obviously, you know, we heard about it here and there, maybe on TV or things like that. Um, it wasn't a topic of much conversation, um, but it was evil. Everyone knew it. Um, no one would ever think of doing that. And to have someone think that you would do something like that, even today, uh, would be a terrible thing to have thought of your character, that you would kill your own child. Contrary-wise... We were taught to love and cherish our children and birth was looked forward to and pregnancy is cherished. Even though reservation life is not perfect and many families have familial problems, abortion was something that was universally evil by any and all accounts. If a person got pregnant, it is a cause for celebration and joy and everyone looks forward to the coming birth. That's typically the way things have been, and that goes for, you know, whether you were married or not when you found out you got pregnant. Um, new life is a joy and a blessing. This view of life as a joy and a blessing that has existed on our reservation in Arizona is something that needs to be taught openly to our children and grandchildren who are now in a world that has many leaders of states and countries who almost violently impose their support of abortion on other people. We have the ability to speak for ourselves and to manifest our voices through voting and being involved in a political and cultural sphere. How do we make sure that we are voting for people who are in support of life? Does one voice really matter? The answer is yes, I think it does. One voice does matter. Because your voice gives courage to other voices. Your voice does matter. Please do vote and vote for people who support life and are against abortion. How can I figure out who to vote for? Perhaps some people, you know, have asked that question. We, we kind of look to our friends or other people that we know, our family members, to try to figure out who to vote for. Well, um, for me... I wouldn't vote for any person running for office, for any office, if I knew they were supporting abortion. I didn't vote for anyone who supported abortion during the last national election and any of the other elections either. Um, I don't agree with those who want to make sure that our tax dollars pay for abortions, and that includes all abortions for any reason. When we vote, we need to try to find out who the candidates are that are against abortion. Um, then we choose between that group of people regardless of what their political affiliation is. So if um, 
no one in a political party is against abortion, then we probably shouldn't vote for anyone in that political party because um, that will get the people in that political party to start thinking that they need to have some candidates who are against abortion. Otherwise, no one's going to vote for them. Um, when we vote, we need to try and try when we vote, we need to try to find out who the candidates are that are against abortion. Then we choose between that group of people, regardless of what their political affiliation is. At that point, we can look at their other uh, political ideas and choose based on what else we think is important. I don't know, you know, who's all going to run at every election that's out there, but um, the there are candidates in your certain areas that you can choose from and uh, don't pick any who support abortion. You will feel good about yourself that you chose to protect innocent babies. Which political parties have candidates who support or are against abortion? Um, as of right now, it's uh, April 24th, 2020. And I'm hoping that a lot of this information will change in the future. And that's one of the reasons that I'm making this video is so that more people can um, have political candidates who are in support of life. So far, most of the candidates that have been against abortion um, have been Republican. And that's, um, it appears to be the same in my area where I live um, with the, the local, um, you know, Senate, the local House of Representatives. All of the people that we're picking are against abortion as far as I know. And um, I have heard in the past that there have been some that weren't, um, they, they say they don't care one way or another. Uh, I don't vote for those ones even if they are LDS like me, you know, even if they were running for a national election, if they say that they don't care about whether um, abortions happen or not, and they say they don't care whether the law uh, changes in favor of pro-life, uh, then I don't vote for them, even if they're of the same religion. And the reason is, is because I figure if they don't have the courage of their convictions, then I won't vote for them, even if they happen to be the same religion as me. I will still choose from the group of people who say they are against abortion. I know there is always the chance that someone could be lying about it, but so far, most of the people who say they are against abortion end up staying that way while they are in office, and hopefully they don't change later on in life. If they ever do change, then I will not support them anymore. Right now, most Democrats, unfortunately, who are running for the higher levels of office, political office, um, are abortion supporters and want to make it a permanent part of the Constitution. And most of it want it paid for by our taxes through the medical care assistance that people get. That is how Planned Parenthood and other abortion clinics have gotten much uh, some estimates lately have been saying close to half of their money over the past decade or more. I hope that changes. I hope that the Democratic Party starts getting people into office who are against abortion. Especially at the higher levels of office. Many Democrats who are running for the lower levels of office often do not support abortion, but I don't think they have the ability to make choices for the nation as a whole on issues such as abortion like the president, Congress members, governors, or senators do. Those Democrats who are against abortion have also not been allowed by the Democratic Party leaders to run for higher levels of office like that for the past two decades approximately. Though some of the lower political office candidates may not support abortion, you have to be careful because sometimes they will still try to get you to vote for other higher profile Democrats, even though those other ones do support abortion. Because maybe they don't know that um, to many of us that we don't 
we really don't like abortion and we really don't want to vote for anyone who does, regardless of their political party. Um, so we shouldn't pick just by political party if we are going to choose. We need to look to see who supports what, and we shouldn't pick anyone who supports abortion. We know that we will be accountable to God for knowingly voting for people in office who signed off on behalf of the deaths of babies. So we shouldn't do that. If you are a member of a political party, do everything you can to promote pro-life in your political party. So far from what I've read and seen and what people have told me, most progressives support abortion. I don't think I've ever heard of any who don't. And I don't think their party allows anyone to run for office who isn't in support of abortion. Why should we vote against abortion? Is it important that we take a stance against it? I honestly think that the worst crime committed in our society today, and there are some pretty bad ones, is abortion. The people in this country who are voting for abortion and making it into law are killing more babies than the amount of men and women that have been lost in most wars. Someday we will look back on this period in time and our descendants will wonder how ordinary everyday people could look the other way or lend a helping vote to the destruction of babies, just like we now look back at the Holocaust and wonder how everyday people in Germany at that time could allow their friends and neighbors to be killed in concentration camps. There are some states who now legalized abortions up to nine months, nine months along in the pregnancy right up to the baby's birth. There are some states who now legalized abortion up to nine months along in the pregnancy right up to the baby's birth. A few states like Virginia, from what I heard recently, are even pushing for abortions after the baby has already been born. They call it post-birth abortion. On the other hand, there are many states who have started trying to make it against the law. Where there is evil, there is also good. We just need to choose the good and stay on that side. I think that babies have a right to their own lives and are their own being as soon as the baby is conceived. So as soon as the egg and the sperm connect to form a distinct being is when um, I believe that a new person has started there is a complete new DNA at that point, and that DNA is a person. How does my church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, um, well, what does my church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, say about abortions? I understand that our church has made a statement on abortion and only thinks that abortions might be allowable if the mother's life is actually in danger or if they were pregnant by rape or incest and the church has also stated on their page that the decision should be a matter of prayer even under those circumstances and that this the decision should be made in connection with sound medical advice from a doctor and that they should also counsel with their bishop about it so it's not something that should be taken lightly and um, si the situations differ and really it's um, not something that, um, that is, is just completely permissible. <clears throat> A lot of people say don't punish the baby, punish the rapist. There are many women who were raped, who have raised their baby, saying, don't punish the baby, punish the rapist, because they know that the baby is theirs, regardless of who the father ended up being, or regardless of the fact that they were raped by someone. The baby has their own DNA. Some have given up their children for adoption after selecting a good home for the baby. There are many alternatives to abortion, and most church leaders have spoken out against abortion and say it's only allowable under very, very serious conditions 
And even then, it might not be the best idea. Have courage to stand up for innocent babies. Remember, many people don't support, support abortion at all. Often people will try to make you feel bad that you don't want to support abortion. They will talk crap to you. I've had people talk crap to me. Um, not very often, but I think once or twice someone has said uh, something snotty, but I usually don't, you know, uh, talk to people that are really pro-abortion anyway because they'll really get into your face about it and that's not pleasant, so who would keep going there? Anyway, um, they will talk crap about it to you in an effort to silence you. But if your voice causes even just one baby not to be killed, then you did a very good thing. Most Native people that I know would never support it and would never have an abortion themselves, though I think there have been a few that now have. Growing up on the reservation, that was something that was unheard of. It was not a subject of debate before because no one supported it and everyone knew it was evil. I think for the most part, it's still that way on the reservation. Women who choose love. Every baby is worthy of love. My beautiful children and grandchildren are so loved and cherished and their births have been eagerly anticipated. My daughter is a wonderful mother. There have been women who have had bad things happen to them, which caused their pregnancy. Some women have been abandoned by their spouse or partner and have had to face the fear and uncertainty of pregnancy alone. I found myself alone when I was eight months pregnant with my first child. I woke up alone in the hospital with her by my side wrapped up in a little blanket. She looked like a tiny princess. I know I had it hard um, having to go through that. It was um, very difficult. I was young. I was only 19, relatively innocent. I never thought something like that would ever happen to me. Um, I'd always hoped that when I uh, first had a baby that I was going to be loved and cherished. I always, I thought that that's the way it would be. And I, you know, ended up getting left alone. And there are a lot of women that have had that happen to them and worse. And um, it's not a reflection on you or what you're worth. If someone does something bad to you, you're still worth the same. And, uh, you know, um, in God's sight, we're worth everything. And um, we need to remind each other of that. And, and if we need to, to remind ourselves of it too. I applaud those women who have turned a bad experience in life into something wonderful. I know people and have read about women who have carried their baby and not chosen abortion even when they were raped. So many women choose a baby's life over their own. They are the bravest people on the planet. I know in our extended family and in many of my friends' families, we have children who have been adopted into our families and they are such wonderful, valued parts of our family. You know, people we would have never imagined um, not being a part of our family. Every woman stares death in the face when she becomes pregnant, knowing that she is giving her life for her child. In essence, we, mo women who have had a child are saying, I would give my life so that you could have yours. We all know as soon as we become pregnant that we could die during pregnancy or childbirth. I remember every single time that occurring to me right after I found out that I was expecting that I could die from this, that I might not make it through. A lot of people don't. Um, that, that realization is there throughout your entire pregnancy, the thought that we might not survive. But we choose to focus instead on the baby that's alive and how much our child needs us. We focus on life. 
We love our kids and that's why we are willing to take that chance. Sometimes people ask the question, would you die for your kids? I see it sometimes here and there on the internet in various forms. My first thought is that your mother was willing to trade her life for yours so that you could live and that's why you're here. Most mothers have that instinct to give life. We need to teach our young people about how life is sacred. I don't know why some people are choosing their own lives over their children's. I know some of them, especially the very young, don't understand and need to be taught that babies are a gift from heaven and that your kids make your life better. Also, that the babies are alive inside their wombs, that abortion is not a choice and should not be considered. For those people who are just evil, perhaps they cannot be taught, but we still need to protect their children even if they don't want to by making abortion illegal. We must learn to empathize with the baby. Many people can empathize with the mother's plight, but some people have a hard time empathizing with the baby. That's where you try to feel what the baby feels and think about what the baby needs and what the baby would want. The baby is alive and just wants to be loved by its mother. That's all any baby wants primarily. If the mother does not love the baby and wants to kill it, then the baby's next primary instinct is that it wants to be loved by its father. Of course, the baby wants both of its parents. So men do have the responsibility to protect their children. And I honestly think that men do have the same right as the mother when it comes to deciding, um, you know, against um, abortion. Choose wisely and trust God. Now we are having to choose between candidates in office who support abortion and those who don't. Don't be afraid to speak up against abortion. If you are a Christian, God-fearing person, God will protect you against any people who try to put you down for speaking out against it. Also, you will help other people because you will give them the courage to stand against it. If they see you standing against it too, it will help them, it will bolster them, and it will give them the courage to make the choices that they need to make as well. And um, that's all I have to say about it. And I thank you guys for watching. I hope it's I hope it helps you. I know um, at first for me, it was a little bit scary, um, especially when people would kind of get mean and nasty with me about it, you know? And then I would see people that I thought I trusted as sticking up for those people, people that I thought knew better, um, uh, telling me things like, well, you know, uh, that woman, um, what, what about it in this situation? Or what about that situation, you know? And um, like people should have their choice uh, no matter what happens to them. But um, the thing is, is that, um, um, you know, or, or people would say things to me like, uh, you know, you don't care about those women that had something bad happen to them. They'll try to say stuff like that to you. But um, just remember that you're, you're sticking up for for a baby that can't stick up for themselves. They don't have a voice, but they do, um, they do have a life and they care about their life as much as we care about ours. Um, babies can hear what's going on outside the womb right after a certain time. Uh, I don't know how soon they have a sense of themselves, but I do feel that it's pretty early on they they have a connection to their mother um, inside the womb and so um, we need to make sure that we protect children and i i hope this video helps you to have the courage to do it too just remember you're not alone and uh, there are others that are willing to support you as you um, make the attempt and try to support other people and please, for those of you out there that maybe you're 
wondering what to do, please don't ever support anyone that supports abortion. Don't vote for them. And uh, one thing we need to remember is not to lie to ourselves. It's easy to try to pretend in your head that someone doesn't support abortion and just go ahead and support them anyway because you think they are um, supporting Native rights or you think that they're supporting um, this right or that right or the environment or whatever the case may be. There's people on both sides of um, the political spectrum that um, care about the same things that we care about that care about native rights that care about the environment it's not just one side or the other so please when you vote vote for someone that um supports life and thanks for watching y'all have a good night good day or whenever it is that you hear this bye